Here, when I moved here, I moved from a small apartment to an even smaller apartment. It's only 35 square meters here. It's where I live, where I eat, where I sleep, where I do everything, plus the studio. So I knew that space will be very critical to work in an efficient way. It's not a big space, but it looks really functional. I was trying to make it as fun of a place as possible. I'm trying to have it in a way where I almost trip over everything when I wake up in the morning, where I just feel like it's a playground where I like to sit. David is not only a music producer, he also has a growing YouTube channel where he breaks down and recreates popular electronic music. Or as he puts it, I make music and I make videos about music. But before, we listen to it. In this video, I will show you the fundamentals of lo-fi. Now let's get into his studio and find out why he doesn't let anything touch the floor. You have a lot of things here, right? And I guess it started with music production equipment, right? First and foremost, it's a music making space. And at some point, you know, my love for filmmaking and my love for YouTube came also into play and I adapted it in order to make not only music here, but also videos about music. So that's when I expanded it a bit. I have lots of tiny gadgets that just make my life easier. For example, this headphone stand here. You know, I have my mic stand here. I have my laptop on a stand. I have my monitor on a stand. I have everything on a stand and I have these really cool wall mounts with all the lighting on there. They look really cool. They're really practical. It's, you can't underestimate these wall mounts because otherwise you would have tripods standing everywhere and suddenly it looks messy, suddenly you have much less space and suddenly it's just not as fun to move around here. The heart of all this is my laptop over there. It's uh, everything you need actually in order to make great music. Everything else is optional, I would say. Oh yeah. I, I st still think that mouse and keyboard is the most important input tool for me. But yeah, it's fun to play around on the keyboard a little bit. It even has a stand up with this, by the way. Ooh. Please don't ask me how often I use it. How often do you use Never. it? <laughs> what I really like here is this little thing over there to my right. It's just a tool to manipulate your software. It shows me the volume of any track I have selected. And when I change a track, this one also changes. And that enables me to really quickly change volume. It's a lot of fun. This one is the push controller. It's made by the same company that made the software I make music in, Ableton Live. Uh, it's my, my love. The one button I use the most is the play button. It's like the space bar. Yeah, the play button I really use a lot, but it's also fun to play around with. Is there one thing that's like, I don't know, the first thing you bought or something that you still have? Or? You know, I bought speakers, I bought this desk, I bought a computer and then a new computer and then a new computer and then a new computer. <laughs> so yeah, in 10 years, I think I switched out pretty much everything. All replaced, except for the software. Even the software I changed along the way. Okay. So this is Ableton Live, it's actually the third DAW, we call it, digital audio workstation yeah. that I use. I uh, started out on Logic, which is the Apple one, and then I switched over to Cubase. I still use Cubase for audio post-production stuff. As soon as I started to do more electronic music, I looked at Ableton Live and I fell in love, and it's still my big love. It's a beautiful software. That's a term you don't hear often, like a beautiful software. I don't know. I have, I have a kind of a, sounds weird, but a bit of a romantic relationship Aww. to it. You know, I spend so much time in it, and I think the way it looks is beautiful. It's a, it's a software made in Germany. You can kind of see it. It's, it has no bells and whistles. You know, it has no gray scales or shading or 3D elements. It's very plain. It's very 2D. It's very, look at it. It's, it's very, what's the word? You know, very German, I feel like. They set the software in a way where it uh, randomly assigns a color to a new channel I make. So every time my project looks a bit different. Some producers have a very specific color code. Drums is this color, uh, melody is this color and whatever. But I just have it random and then I basically have groups, for example, a drum group or an instrument group. Then I color this group in the same color to give it a bit of a structure. So is this like your dream setup or are you still working things out? It's definitely a work in progress. Uh, what I really 
try to somehow manage is the the cables if you look closely here i mean what's going on here and i don't know what to do with it i change it up a, a lot as well so i can't really you know somehow pin the cables somewhere because i want to be able to change it up and i mean dream studio you know when it comes to music there's so much stuff i would like to have it's just you know you could buy all these synthesizers like real hardware synthesizers you can have walls of synthesizers all these gears when it comes to music production it's just a never-ending story which is also cool in a way to have it never ending and i can always improve on it um but honestly you know when it comes to youtube it's really cool i mean i have my lights you know i can do some kind of three-point lighting if you want I can switch them up. They are RGB. I can change the color. Do you like change the color for like different moods that you are working in or something? You know, usually I have one lighting setup I like at the moment. It's a red blue kind of combination. The softbox is up there at the moment. I only turn that on when I film myself, when I need just a yeah, very properly lit face. You know, I like it dark in my room and then it should feel maybe a little bit like a club atmosphere or maybe like a bar atmosphere. And then I sit here and, and just make my beat. Does that make the music feel more authentic? I, I don't think it's the bar vibes that are important. It's more like the darkness, I feel like, that helps. It helps me to shut out the rest of the world. I also like to produce music with headphones, which is in some ways can be a bit tricky when you're trying to mix stuff and when, when you're trying to master stuff. But yeah, the, the headphones also help me to really focus in and then I'm really in the music there. So that's also cool. But of course, I have a bunch of speakers here as well. I have these tiny speakers here, for example, now. Right. And they come with a special microphone that you put where you sit, where your ears are. And then you can do a calibration. So. You basically say calibrate, then it sends a sine wave through the whole frequency spectrum, something like boop, boop. And the microphone here uh, basically then measures how the room is changing the sound and then countermeasures that. So it helps get getting rid of the imperfections of your room, which are plentiful in an apartment like this that is not meant as a music studio. It's really useful because I just have some really weird frequencies floating around here, so... Yeah, I'm sure the window blinds don't help. Yes. Uh, curtain here. This will be an uh, important next step. I actually already bought the curtain. I didn't put it up yet. <laughs> Soon. I know you have a secret weapon in here. Before we can answer this question, let's look at the newest addition to the studio. A welcome package by Angelbird. I'm not sure what's in there yet, but I gotta assume it's something really awesome. Let's find out. <laughs> Ooh, that is that is rich. Thank you for being part of the Orbit launch crew. SD card, very useful. SD dual card reader. What's this? A tech pouch for hard drives and other devices. That's all Angelbird stuff. They have their shit together. That's awesome. An Orbit launch crew sticker with my name on it. A nice little bag to top it all off. I'm shocked by the amount of stuff that's in there. Thank you very much, Orbit, and thank you very much, Angelbird, for these beautiful presents. So, but I know you have a secret tool weapon thing in here. Ah, uh, yeah. My sub pack? Yes. And you're talking about the sub pack, yeah? Can you see it? Yeah, so what, what the heck is that? So this, my friend, is a so-called sub pack. And it's basically a backpack and it's super dusty. So it shows you how often I actually use it, which is rarely, but it can be useful because uh, it actually comes out of gaming and this whole thing here on the back starts to vibrate when you play music. The sub bass frequencies vibrate here on the back and it's just, it's usually just meant for gaming to just enhance the gaming experience because you feel gunshots and explosions on your body. And at some point, music producers found out that you can kind of mimic the feeling of a big sound system, because when you stand in front of a big sound system, also your whole body vibrates. It helps me to compare my sub bass with sub bass of other songs that I admire. And it helps me kind of get a feel of how would this song sound like in a big festival stage or in a club. It's a bit hard to use because the vibration kind of makes your eyes also vibrate a little bit. So your vision gets blurry. 
So it's it's a very you know pinpoint tool that sometimes can be great in the very end of uh, the music production process. Have you ever tried it like with really low smooth bass to just massage your back? <laughs> uh, no, never. I think for for massage the vibration is uh, much too. It's not subtle enough. It's different. I, I would need like bigger things that really punch the back somehow. This is basically like putting your uh, putting a very big phone on your back. That's the kind of vibration you have. Okay, maybe not so nice. I have a little thing actually, a cool trick that I wanted to show you when it comes to dust on gear. Let me let me let me bring it for you. <laughs> this is the special dust remover because you can really nicely just go in there and get rid of the dust and otherwise you can't do it. Very important, very important tool. Having having a nice brush to get rid of dust. Really smart, really smart thing. Great minds think alike, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, so, okay, one more thing before we wrap this up. I know everybody has a drawer full of cables somewhere. Where, where are your cables? I mean, aside from messy underneath the desk. Oh, I have, I have plenty, plenty, plenty. So let's see, I have stuff here. It's all just old hard drives. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Headphones. I'm a headphone addicted. I have many headphones. I have at least 20 headphones. All right, so OK. More cables. Purple cables. Oh, nice. oh, I have another thing that maybe you might like. <laughs> Productivity hack. OK. Come, come with me. Oh, I'm coming with you. <laughs> it's also just random chunk. <laughs> but look, I'm using these old coffee things to put uh, stuff here, adapters. Oh, yes. And I have one for I appreciate USB this. sticks. Yeah, I appreciate Beautiful. good uh, cardboard boxes. But what I actually wanted to show you is my... How are you storing them? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm using these old toilet paper thingies to try to store my, <laughs> yes. my cables. But you know, it started out nice, but then I put cable on top of cables on top of cables and then it starts to get a mess again. So it's just really hard. I mean, I see some cables that are definitely outdated and don't yet exist anymore. I would need just a week of no obligations to just get rid of most of it because yeah, as you say, I don't even know what that cable is, honestly. I also don't think I need a Firewire 400 cable anymore. No. <laughs> You know, it just, it gets messy and messier and messier automatically. And when I moved in six months ago, it was much yeah. more unmessy. So of yeah, that, that's what I'm here for. The um, truth. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming by. My name is David, David Ritt. I'm a music producer and filmmaker. I make music and I make videos about music. If you enjoyed this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with a fellow creative to support their journey. We're all about highlighting and connecting creators in Europe and beyond. And if you want a chance to shine on one of the future episodes, check out the survey link down below. I'm always excited to meet new creators.